So, hi everyone, welcome to our session. It is going to be about personalizing your customer experience with Dynamics 365. Thank you for showing up bright and early at 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Um, so, yeah, we of course have our BSL interpreter here, so if you would like to refer to her if you need to, that would be great. Yeah, and uh, we'll start by introducing our lovely sponsors, and we need the, because I've been clicking on the other screen. Now it should be working. Okay, <laughs> so thank you to our sponsors, um, Microsoft, our event sponsor, Platinum sponsors, as well as our goal sponsors, um, and for each area of the, the sponsors. But basically, thank you to all our sponsors, of course, without them, this event really would not be what it is. So I really want to highlight that. Now, just to introduce ourselves. Thank you. So my name is uh, Guru. Uh, I'm based out of Norway. I'm a BISAPS MVP. Uh, I've been working with uh, Dynamics for the 10 last years. And before that, uh, also within IT, customer service, uh, retail, financial services, and been an event manager for quite uh, a stint of events as well, 10 years. Uh, I love clothes, as you might see in our presentations. I own uh, over 300 dressers. I can't fit them in my house, uh, but I do try, and I do try to fit in more and more over time. Um, so, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, where I continue to post about customer experience and marketing and customer insights, which are products that I work with on a daily basis as my role as a go-to-market lead for marketing and uh, customer insights at Avanaid. Uh, I'm not really active on Twitter, but you can find me there as well, where I repost events and uh, fun facts from others, uh, and sometimes share where I will be speaking. Uh, and over to you. So, hi, my name is Trisha, and I'm the D365 Customer Service Lead at have not. Um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft C MCT, which means I do do some occasional training. Um, but I've got over 10 years of experience within CRM and other business applications. Um, more interestingly, I am actually from Jamaica, and I actually started my entire career in a contact center. So I use that past to help with, you know, understanding customer service from an agent side, a supervisor side, but also as someone who really values true personalized customer service. And that's exactly what, I'm gonna be, what we're gonna be showing you today, those experiences. Now, I can be reached on LinkedIn, so please feel free to connect with me there. But a tidbit, please introduce yourself. I do ignore those that don't introduce themselves because I don't really know where I know you from. Um, but I also like to blog about omnichannel, DevOps, customer service, and I can also be reached on Twitter. I am a bit active on Twitter, unlike Guru. I am actually active on, on Twitter, so reach me there as well. Now, one of the sayings that I really enjoy is give a customer a great experience and they'll buy more, be more loyal, and they'll share their experiences with friends. This is so true. Um, there's another saying which really ties well into this, which is it's actually cheaper to retain a customer than to get a new customer. Right now, obviously, where the world is in a, a, a bit of a fluctuation, especially with you know tightening off the budgets, um, why not focus on the customers that we have? Because through word of mouth, that does two things. It ensures that you're getting value for, well, the money or investment that you're putting in, but it actually has another side effect, additional customers through word of mouth. So really, let's focus on how we can actually ensure that the customers that we have are happy, we're providing excellent customer service to them, and in turn, that way, we can actually utilize them to gain more customers. And we do see today an experience gap from going uh, digital and physical, and not even that schism, but also different departments. Uh, your different stores might have different systems, even though you're the same brand and your customers expect a coherent experience but they are not getting it, and why? 
And personally, I see that data is a contributor to that, but it's not the only factor. Uh, but it's the way that we work with data. It's not a problem to get data. Uh, it's a problem to figure out how to best use the data you have and how to get value of that. Companies today probably have tons of systems that gather excellent data about their customers. But if they're not talking together and sharing this to build on top of that layer, they're not getting any added value. And that's where we also see that bringing customer data together, in, such as customer insights as a customer data platform, can help you provide this in an easier way for the organization. This is also where we see AI and ML for enrichment. Who doesn't want to know someone's customer lifetime value or their churn score the minute they speak with them? Uh, well, it depends on the role, obviously, but it is a helping fact uh, when giving someone customer service or providing them with an experience in store or online. This is how we also need to figure out the, the privacy and personalization paradox. You might have enough data to feel like stalkery if you send them a notification the minute they've clicked on something online. You might consider they to be less effective strategies, uh, but there's other ways we can use the data to seem personalized and to see that we know the customer who doesn't like to be recognized. Um, but it's all about the tone, the language, and when. Yeah. And the most important part is to use data or to use what you get, the experiences, the touch points, in an actionable way so that you can actually monetize or make your experiences count when they matter. This is also where we see that digital and physical experiences, that there's a barrier and they're not connected at all. And really finding a way to disband the silos is where we need to go for our next step. We have uh, seen so many projects since we are in the same company. We often are engaged on the same deals and we are faced with the same kind of stories, user stories requirements over and over that really ties into this, but we're often asking maybe the wrong questions. It's not, you might want to ask uh, other questions than we want a CRM system or we want a new ERP system, but why do you really want it and need it? And how can we make those systems and experiences both for the employees and the customers be improved by the way we connect data across? So, what so, what impact does this have on customer experience? So, as my lovely colleague Guru mentioned, there's so many data silos right now. Um, everyone understands the impact of having data, and each of these systems are collecting it. But to be honest, a lot of these systems, like a lot of companies, aren't using this effectively. If we actually have the understanding of who the customer is, know your customer. And that's actually one of the challenges reported, um, as Guru mentioned, in a lot of deals that we work on. One of the key challenges that a lot of companies have is, we don't know who our customer is. Now, if you don't know who your customer is, how do you know that you're annoying them? One of the first things that I actually do before I engage in a new company or if I purchase anything, especially if it's anything significant, is what do you do? You research them. Now, as you research them, one of the things that you're researching is how, like, what's their experience, what's their, what's their customer service like? Because I guarantee you, if, if they have any negative feedback, that is going to impact you from purchasing that, right? So if you know that your customers are not happy, and you can actually see that through the trend. You can see that through the trend of the data that is actually being provided. You can see if they're purchasing from you, how frequently, what feedback they've actually been giving you. And through that, you can actually dissuade and turn someone who's feeling negative towards your company to be an absolute fan of your company and willing to actually do business with you, willing to actually speak to other people about you, willing to give you those references. That's the impact of customer experience. Negative customer experience, trust me, your company is going to suffer. It might not even last. Positive customer experience, 
you will actually be you you fly. So it's important to understand your customer journey. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, but today we're going to have a story in retail. And this could be any story because it's the customer that we often need to put first front and center and not as a second thought when we design our business processes. So we need to find ways to inspire the customer, have them come back as customers so we can retain them and make them advocates out there. We need to make the customer aware of our products, our changes in business, etc. And then also help them decide by providing good uh, comparison, reviews from others, and maybe even personalized interactions, like booking a meeting or uh, showing someone around the store. And then also assist the customer when buying. Is this the size you need or should it be a different one? It can be anything from clothes uh, to lawnmowers to watering systems or to uh, what kind of loans you want. It's all a customer journey still, and you might need one, or think you need one thing, but actually by com talking with someone with more insights than you, uh, you might get some good results back as a customer also. This is where we see that marketing uh, has a huge benefit of customer service. Customer service can be seen as one of the best marketing channels because you are on direct contact with the customer via chat, via phone, in person, by letter or email. There's many ways we can connect, inspire, and give those small moments that can spark joy. And then the end, we want to reward the customers either by giving them some loyalty points so they can buy something at a discount give them discounts or trade. Uh, if we don't know enough about their customers, maybe they could get something in return for providing us with more information. Have you ever gotten an email asking you to fill out a few fields for a discount code on something that you have been wanting but not wanting enough to purchase directly? That's a good way that we can lure customer data out of end customers in return for them seeing an added value, they see the gift that they are receiving for not providing much, maybe only that they prefer boots with heels or flat shoes. It doesn't have to be something dramatic, but it's valuable information when you think about a holistic customer profile, preferences and trends in the market. So just one, one additional thing here. So I, I like this customer journey because to be honest, the touch points here, and a lot of people think, when they think of customer service, they tend to think of after care. So after the sale has happened. But to be honest, customer service is really any touch point with a customer. Every single touch point with a customer, you're actually providing service. So it's important that your agents and your, your staff have the necessary information to be able to assist the customer with buying help the customer decide, and also support the customer, and even allowing them to be empowered enough to know how to reward the customer. So this is actually where the data and the personalization of customer service is really key. So what you've seen a few tidbits of so far is our beautiful customer, Maria. Uh, we, she will be joining us on this journey today. Uh, and yes, Trisha will be Maria during some of these uh, reenactments of a customer lifetime journey. But uh, we will see uh, but how we can impact through surveys and rewards, product reviews, um, store purchases and offers, and also how customer care or digital interactions can provide so much value to us um, when we interact with our customers. And with that, we have a little demo Yes, let's go to our demo. And switch to screen. And this is our beautiful, beautiful e-commerce site, Ultiva Fashion. Just a caveat, neither of us are portal experts. Yes, okay. we did not go to the portal or pages 101 course. Uh, so this is uh, our best effort at making something that can resemble a store. <laughs> Uh, I have run a website before, e-commerce, but uh, then we <laughs> did not use portals. <laughs> but Maria, she is a frequent customer. She has been purchasing with us before, but
but she's been seeing ads online uh, and she clicks it and ends up on our front page, Altiva. Of course, she, she's not interested in men's outfits this time, so she'll go over to the women's section and she's planning a getaway uh, soon on a yacht somewhere fancy. It's my birthday, so, you know. <laughs> and, of course, why not go all the maritime and uh, do some white sneakers, Sailor Moon outfit. It's perfect. Perfect. It's what she wants. It's her dream. So, Maria, uh, as this is not an e-commerce site, will just fill out this little form. And, of course, the sizing here is a little bit odd. So she buys uh, medium pairs of shoes, and she also, uh, I want to see, maybe I need them in the large, like the sizing here is not, not the best. Uh, and with that, she's now purchased two pairs of shoes. Of course, she can return one of them if it doesn't fit. And that's kind of the essence of our story here, is that we do interact with businesses, not only when we want to, but also when we have to. I don't need a pair of shoes that I cannot wear, although I have too many of them. Uh, but let's set that aside for a little while. I need to complete my outfit, so I'm also going to buy this Knit Sailor uh, sweater. But that is sadly out of stock. And like most e-commerce sites do these days, is you can be notified when it's back in stock. And here, I only have to put in my name, uh, and my phone number, and if I'd logged in, they would have known all of this about me. So, I'll just say the size I want, and the quantity, and I have another demo with this as well, with a mobile device, so I'm gonna skip that for now. So, the site will then, of course, notify me when this is back in stock. And that's where we've already started gathering a lot of Maria's interest. She's looking for something with stripes, and she's looking for something that we currently don't have in stock. She might be browsing even more and seeing uh, products that we have or do not have in stock. Maybe she wants something for her partner or don't. Uh, disregarding what she's buying or not right now, we are gathering all of this information into a unified customer profile with customer insights. Uh, we have added all of our data sources and that could be anything from your CRM system, your order system, your ERP system. They can be on the Microsoft platform, they can be on different platforms. The beauty of customer insights is that it can connect to pretty much any source. And you can then unify your data quite nicely in this SaaS tool. Here we have our dynamics uh, for customer data and orders. And I've also added my legacy CRM system that I've migrated out of. And also, I have a mobile app, so I'm gathering information from usage on that as well. All of these is being grouped together in our customer profiles. And I can see across all of them that are frequent customers or less frequent, or maybe just have visited our site once. With this, we can do predictions, intelligent uh, suggestions on their product recommendations, calculate their churn score and their customer lifetime value. And I can even use more uh, models uh, that Microsoft have provided, or I can bring in my own machine learning models from Azure Machine Learning Studio. With this, I can build segments, uh, and I can group them by loyalty levels, or I can group them by place, uh, city, location, wherever, based on the data I have. In this scenario, I don't have that much data I'm going to showcase from uh, the segments, but I'm going to find Maria. That's the wrong keyboard. <laughs> and then I have too many Marias. So Maria Tramel is her maiden name. She got married and is now named Maria Trainer. Um, but as you see here, we have some of her uh, last purchases. We know her email address, we know her lo loyalty level ID. Here we picked the, the grid instead of the, the name. Uh, and all of this is grouped in what we call a unified customer profile with her activities in a timeline, which can be helpful and useful in other systems as well. I also see the recommended next product and how much uh, Maria is purchasing over time. 
And this is kind of the basis of what we could use for exporting to other systems, but also keep in, uh, in customer insights to do advanced reporting on with Power BI. But we have uh, Maria. She's been on our website. Uh, she has said she wants to be notified when something is back in stock. So we made this journey come to life with a few branches and different channels. So whenever a customer joins in this customer journey, we want to check if, what their loyalty level is. And depending on uh, their st loyalty level, Maria, uh, she is at her gold membership level, she will be notified first. So she's head of the queue, and the silver and bronze, they have to wait five hours before they will be notified if something is back in stock. So we will give our loyalty members with the highest status the advantages when they are our frequent shoppers. With this, we also have an A-B test which is running to see if it's an SMS or an email, which is most preferred channel of interaction. And so far, our SMSs have been the only thing that's been sent, but still, quite a good click-through rate. And after that, to check if they have purchased or not, we are triggering our loyalty support to reach out for a personal one-to-one -one, uh, interaction because we value those customers that much that we want to give them that feeling of being seen to give them personal support if needed. Our silver and uh, bronze members, they receive an email and then they have to kind of help themselves on the website. But still, it's one of multiple ways we can use customer journeys uh, to orchestrate someone's interactions with us. And then we could have done this multiple ways. We could have had a power app for in-store activities uh, where someone could have walked up to me and I could have entered their, their name or I might even know them. They spend that much money with us. And we could combine that with beacons, uh, someone walking by the store, we can send them push notifications or SMSs based on their preferred activities or we can personalize the content they receive when interacting with us. So Maria, she could now have walked into our shop and we could just check out this knit sailor sweater just here and then. And it would be, this is very simplified, but it could be this easy. Uh, and to make a purchase, and we can even personalize the receipts we give her based on the data we have in our customer profile but also what she's been buying from us uh, here today. And this should be a little quicker. And then, thank you. Uh, I now see not that much, but I am a gold uh, member. So that is personalized here in my receipt based on data from my customer profile. All of this is brought together uh, with rich insights uh, in our journey uh, tool, marketing, uh, where I see that we have both information on the journeys that are active, the segments that we have triggering, and also the channels and their performance, or if they're having any issues, which I can monitor then based on my journey level or on my channels, and I can see the level of engagement with my customers. And this is something I can see uh, across my, my links, my channels, what's happening, uh, do I have too high levels of hard, soft, or blocked emails, etc. Which is super important information to get back in order to know that you have the right information about the customers. And I very quickly mentioned that we can even send push notifications, we can send text messages, we can make also custom channels to interact with. And we can send lovely emails uh, that we can personalize on content blocks and we can specialize and tailor to, for example, the loyalty level. And we can then also provide 
a full circle when someone is trying to interact with the data they have been receiving. So Maria, she wants this is now just in my marketing, but imagine this is Maria's email that she has received. She clicks buy now and wants to buy it from their website. But something has come up. Let's pretend we're now back to being Maria. She is browsing for that product that she received a notification from. But she was too slow. It's still out of stock. Someone grabbed the few pieces that were made available. And that's not all. She wants to return one pair of the shoes. She realized it wasn't fitting after all. The medium were maybe a size six and the large were perfect. And she's browsing the customer service site, looking for returns and how to make her return. And with that, we can start a chat. Okay, so Maria has now started the chat. There are a couple of things that I want to draw your attention to. Guru, I, I love you, but I don't know how to use this mouse. Okay, so um, yeah, so a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. Now, we're using a proactive chat. Now, many of you who know me would have probably expected me to demo voice. I'm not going to demo voice, and there's a reason. Um, we tried it. It's very <laughs> bad in an auditorium. That's, that's one of the reasons. The second reason is we have to remember when we're talking about a proactive personalized experience, we really need to factor in that it's not just about the customer. It needs to also be effective for the agents and also the business. Voice is expensive, right? Voice actually means that one agent is interacting only with one customer. With a chat, you can interact with multiple customers, right? So it's actually a proactive chat prompt is one way to deflect from, you know, the voice channel, which is actually your most expensive channel. So it's something that we don't often talk about, and I thought it should actually be highlighted and addressed. And that's the reason that we went with the proactive chat prompt today. Yay. Um, the other thing as well is providing a proactive chat prompt really allows us to kind of manage things. So instead of the customer um, initiating, initiating that contact with us, we're initiating it. Not only that, but because Maria is on the return site, well, we know exactly why Maria is contacting us. So I can actually now route it through to someone, actually, no, hold on, sorry, I need to, we need to be logged in. You're logged in. No? Okay. I need to log in. Let's, uh, I'll do it from my phone. So here we'll just start the chat prompt and you can go to Omni. Okay, so we're gonna, that's how we initiate the chat prompt. Now there are a couple of things that's happening. Maria, Yes, perfect. So Marie, you can see the reason is it's come from the web page returns, um, although it's been triggered from the mobile, because you can trigger it from a mobile or a web page. Um, we know why she's contacting us. So we don't actually need to go through a Power Virtual Agent bot or a bot or anything, because again, we want to provide that proactive level of service to the customer, right? Now, <laughs> we um, rooted it to Faye. Now, Faye is the agent. I'm Faye. Hi. And um, the reason that we rooted it through to Faye is because Faye is trained on how to handle gold level member customers. So what we've done is we've rooted it to the returns queue. The returns queue has multiple people in it. But only a few people are equipped to handle, you know, the, the type of volumes to which Maria likes to purchase. She's a special customer to us. So utilizing what we, we call unified routing, where we can actually use skills-based routing, AI-enabled skills-based routing sentiment, or even effort-based routing to ensure that we're sending it to the right person, is really how we can, per also another way in which we can tr truly provide a personalized experience, okay? Now, the fact that we came through on a proactive chat prompt also means that we do get a little bit more information. So you can actually pass through the pages that Maria has actually visited. We can see here that she actually came through from the customer service page. Um, we can pass through any, like, does she have a shopping basket amount? Does she have, you know, anything? 
that's pending or notifications on the website that might have actually triggered that proactive um, chat. Because although I, the, the trigger for the proactive chat prompt for me was the fact that she was on that website for a set amount of time, there are so many different reasons that you might want to have a proactive chat prompt and all these are configurable by yourself. So it could be that you've entered something incorrectly three or five times, proactive chat prompt. Really ensuring that the customer is getting the support they need before they go away from your website and basically forget about you and say actually that was a rubbish experience. That's not what you want. Now this you might not recognize this. This is actually a very, very new experience of Omnichannel. Um, the experience that you might be familiar with is the, uh, the tabs on the left. This will now be the new experience of Omnichannel come in a few months. So you've heard it here first. Yay. <laughs> this was just released, well, given to me a few days ago to share with you. So. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank the guys at Microsoft. They really wanted you to see it, to give feedback or anything, so if you want to make any comments. But this is actually a, a very similar way, if you're familiar with Unified Service Desk, this is actually the same look and feel of Unified Service Desk. Now, the other thing as well is you have the, um, the experience on the left, which is where we have the communication. You've got your agent inf um, information, so providing all the information that we have about Maria, but also additional information as well. So if I actually go to the contact form, I can actually pull information in from, or see the information that Maria has from Customer Insights. I know, for example, her churn. What do we mean by churn, for those who might not be familiar, is how likely is Maria to stay with us? How likely is it for her to leave? The higher the churn score, it's not good. So we know that Maria is actually at risk of churn. Her score is 0.63, 63%, right? That's obviously not that great. We also know the next product recommendation. Right here it says Nikehair Max and also the timeline for Maria. So this is all from what um, Guru, met, Guru displayed in Customer Insights. Of course, we can also add this information onto the contact form or even onto the customer summary form. So we can actually, at a glance, as an agent, see the information to be able to proactively engage with Maria and make decisions that are going to be in the best, how do you put it, the best outcome for both the business and also the customer. So let's interact with Maria. She's been waiting long enough. You know, super she's, impatient. I know, she's getting super impatient. So let's, let's not hold her up. Smash. Yeah. Thank you. So we have what's known as quick replies. Now with quick replies, what we have is sometimes as an agent you have a long list of information that you have to provide. That means that you might be typing for a long time, right? One of the things in ensuring that your customer is happy is, well, not keeping them waiting like what I've done to Maria. And to reduce this, I can create what's known as a quick reply. A quick reply is just a, a standard text that you can use, that you can also have a dynamic data infused there that I can use the quick reply or a short code to provide the, uh, the quick reply to the customer, okay? So as Maria is typing through her date of birth, etc., I'm gonna show you the agent productivity area. Now in the agent productivity area, we have what's known as agent scripts. Now what agent scripts allows us to do is have a unique voice, have that, as, not a unique voice, a similar voice across the business to ensure that we're all saying the same thing, we all have the same process as agents. So the first thing that it's telling me to do is greet the customer and introduce myself, which I've done. So I can basically mark that. I can say, yes, I have done that. The next thing it's asking me to do is validate the customer, which I am currently doing. Now I'm going to validate the date of birth as, you know, this. Now you notice, 
This is actually pulling data from the Maria's contact record. I, as an agent, I don't need to be going around CRM to find this information. It's pr being provided to me because as an agent, there's nothing worse than having to drill across different screens and different applications to get the information. It's really, it's time consuming. We don't want that. So I can basically pull the information to me in one area that I can actually, you know, support my customer better. So I've asked Maria, thank you very much. How can I help you? Now, Maria is going to tell me that she wants to issue a product return. Now, the product return she wants is, of course, her shoe. I'm going to try to suggest some answers and I'll show you why we're gonna have this conversation in a second. But um, the other thing I really wanted to show is um, eventually we'll have the sentiment analysis. Um, how many of you have actually seen Omnichannel before? Anyone your first demo of Omnichannel? Okay, so within Omnichannel, you have what's known as the sentiment analysis. So. As Maria is typing, it's analyzing um, and analyzing what she's saying and seeing, okay, is she happy? Is she not happy? And based on the sentiment, if it goes too negative, it can actually notify a supervisor. But to be honest, I'm not going to, I'm going to ensure that she doesn't, she's not unhappy, hopefully. <laughs> but as you can see here, it's going from slightly negative to slightly positive. Um, because she said love. So there is, is like some key words here. Okay. Now, obviously, as Maria is actually putting um, putting in those, that information, I'm trying to I'm trying to support in resolving the issue. But to be honest, I'm actually new to this organization and I don't really know the process. I can actually use what's known as Smart Assist. As you can see with Smart Assist, it's understanding the, um, the transcript and trying to proactively suggest articles or similar cases that could actually help me. But to be honest, none of these, case, none of these are going to help me. So, in this instance, I am going to try to engage assistance from a fellow colleague. Now, this colleague isn't actually an agent. This colleague is more of an advanced supervisor. They, they support with writing knowledge articles. And because I've reviewed this article, and I'm not entirely sure if it's right, let me engage them. Okay? So, this is another um, feature inside of Omnichannel, which is the embedded collaboration with Teams. Um, now, this is still currently in preview, but it should be GA hopefully soon. Um, what, we, what we're able to do here is have a linked chat. Now, this linked chat means that anyone else that interacts with this customer will be able to see the conversations that I've had with her from between Teams and Omnichannel. So it's like more of a continuing of the conversation. Now, I'm gonna type in Harry here. And what you'll see here is an automatic, um, how do you put it? An AI generated conversation summary. So as I've been trying to support Maria, now using AI, it's helping me to reduce the amount of clicks as an agent automatically summarizing what I need support with and so I can actually now engage with Harry. Of course you can change this issue description if you want um, because I don't think I purchased Clown Sadie jeans for Fortnite. Um, so clearly there's, you know, it does have some additional work there in terms of AI. But imagine I didn't, it, it is mostly correct. Customer does love the shoes. The size was wrong. I didn't purchase this. So I can actually change this
and I can't. I, if I tried any resolutions, if it noticed that I tried any, anything, it would actually tell, it would also have it in the resolution that I've tried. Because to be honest, if, if you've actually worked in support, I have worked in support, one of the first things that you do when you go to second line is, okay, what have you tried? You know, what's the problem? What have you tried? So this really gets over that. It gives all the things that's, that's, that's been identified as wrong, all the things that you've tried already. So the second line person or the person that you're asking for support on can focus on actually providing that support. Now, this is different from if you're familiar with um, the what's going on in the customer service um, world. It is different from swarming. Um, okay, so don't mix this up with what's known as swarming. Um, swarming is basically bringing in a team of experts to resolve a problem. But this is really a direct one-on-one -on -one engagement with an expert. And I just want to highlight that when, I think it's last year, at last year's Ignite, Sachin Adela mentioned that now anyone with Microsoft Teams can access D365 data at no additional cost. This is actually where this is being added because this user, Harry, is not a Dynamics user. He is a Teams user. He does not have a Dynamics license. However, he is now able to see this information in terms of that they've purchased the shoes, that they have, you know, and you can actually have additional, like, adaptive cards. What I mean by adaptive cards, it's effectively, what do you want that user to see in order for them to be able to support you? They can now proactively support you, so they see what they need to see to help you, and you share what you need to share for that for you to be, be able to receive help. So it's just one way in which we're actually bringing the platform together. Okay, so right now we're in a very positive mood, that's great. And Harry's basically, just let, let's pretend Harry responded and he's basically said, yes, you need to do a support. And he's told us to go into our agent script area and go into the product support options and issue a product return, right? Now, the benefit of Omnichannel, as you see, it's a multi-session, multi-tabbed experience, is the fact that I can bring in third-party applications and display them inside of Omnichannel. So here, what I've got is a custom app. Now, another thing as well, I know I do train on Power Platform, and I, I do the Power Platform school, and I love it. I am not a Power App person. Like, that's not my vibe. I am Power Virtual Agent every day, all day. So this is not the prettiest Power App, but it is effective, okay? <laughs> That's the key, it's effective, you see what I mean. Uh, but here we're basically showcasing the products that um, Maria's already purchased, um, I've got in warranty or not, and you won't know that you can actually have clothes that are in warranty because if you've ever purchased a very expensive bag, you will want that to be in warranty, especially if the gold kind of breaks off or anything. And Yeezys, they should have a warranty on them. So we're going to basically return the shoes that she purchased um, product didn't match, and we're going to submit that return. We can then um, also, if I go back to this and go to welcome, we can also create a case. Now, when I create this case, this is actually pro, um, going to be pulling information in from the conversation. So, for example, we have that it's Maria Taylor. Um, if we had, for example, this coming through from a PVA, then I have it set that it will not populate the case title with the reason that Maria is calling. So I could actually get this case to be pre-populated with as much information as possible from the conversation. Now imagine what we've actually just done. Maria has been able to um, initiate a conversation through you know, the website, um, because, you know, of, of a sizing issue, I know exactly why she's calling. It's been rooted to the correct person that can actually support. However, I needed additional support, so I'm able to reach out. Again, it's not necessarily about personalizing the agent experience, the customer experience. It's also ensuring that the agent is also supported in a, in a way that allows them to help enable that personalized experience for the customer. So we've really just shown that full journey. I'm just gonna end this conversation now. Um, am I, which website is it? Is it this one? 
Okay, great. So I'm going to end both conversations. And the reason I'm ending both conversations is I want to showcase the end of the journey, which is now, how did we do? Of course, we want feedback. So as part of the feedback, we have customer voice. Customer voice can actually be triggered either by an email or even by being embedded within the chat widget itself. Okay, so I can basically fill this out or not, because to be honest, I didn't make any of them mandatory, but after being submitted, I can save this against the conversation. So we can actually track how well we're doing as a contact center or how well are we doing as um, with Maria herself. Um, if we want to evaluate this information and see, okay, what are we actually doing? How well are we doing as a contact center? Omnichannel comes with so many reports. Um, we have, I think, over seven or ten different reports available with different KPIs necessary for a contact center with an omni-channel. Some of these will, um, I'm going to show you today, for example, the Intraday Insight, which if you've ever heard of, we want like a, a desk, like a, you know, the wall view that you have in a contact center that showcases how many, aid, um, how many calls are coming in, how many agents are on calls, what's the status of these agents. This is actually where, the, that's called the intraday insights for Omnichannel. So you're actually able to see how many conversations are exceeding five minutes wait time, etc. And you can see what, um, what type of channels are currently active or not, what's the state of your, of your agent's availability, you can actually go all um, go into all of that. Um, you also have the historical analysis, which is more of a, a historical view, just to see how well you've actually been doing. Now, this allows you to. This was historically known as customer service insights, to be honest. Um, so a lot of what you had with customer service insights, you have here, including the ability to see topics that are. And when I say topics, what a topic is, it is a machine learning generated um, description or title that's taken from a group of similar cases. So people will report things in a different way. They say things in a different way. So this basically identifies those differences, groups them together so you can identify the trends are you identify? Are you getting more of these types of cases, less of these types of cases? Are you, is your sentiment, um, for, based on your feedback, good or bad with these types of cases? How long is it taking to resolve these types of cases? Because it indicates: Do your agents need training, or do you actually need to deflect these types of cases? And if you need to deflect these type of cases, you can then go straight into Power Virtual Agent because there is integration between it and Power Virtual Agent to allow you to go straight through from the topic to PVA to start deflecting. Okay, so these are some of the reports that are available, but of course you have additional reports, for example, a knowledge search report where you can actually see how, um, how people are searching for your knowledge articles on your website and um, are the knowledge articles on your website effective. I don't know if I can speak at this moment. Don't worry, I'll speak for you. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, what you've been seeing here today is how we can combine these products to make a customer experience. So, from my point of the first part of the demo, we could have also seen some in-app marketing, which we did not, but it's part of the product. Excuse me. <coughs> It's part of the product. Yes. <laughs> ah, thank you. <clears throat> I've mostly viewed and showed you marketing with journey orchestration, with real-time personalization, and cross-channel interaction. We did also see customer insights with unified sources into a customer profile, and how intelligent prediction and how exporting this to third parties, such as uh, Microsoft advertising, Google Ads, or any other like ads placement could have also enabled us a further reach on a new or existing customer base. Ideally, instead of our portal's website uh, for e-commerce, we would like to have shown you this with e-commerce and commerce, and to show that holistic view of the 
the Microsoft Customer Experience Platform, bringing together all of these products with Azure Synapse and Power BI. But that's not really the important. It's in the how we detail and draw out our customer journeys across this that really matter, in my opinion. And clickety click. With that, of course, part of what we wanted to show here is how all of this is a wheel of unifying data. It can be from anywhere where we need to enrich it, we need to unify it, and we need to be able to act upon it. And it's acting uh, or orchestrating or however you want to call it. That's where it really matters, is where we can make use of that data and prove that it's valuable. Reaching the right people in marketing efforts or through uh, our line of business applications as sales or customer service. Oh, beautiful transitions. Click, click, yes. Um, we have then, this is just another view of the same we just saw, oh, excuse me. Um, but it's the understanding uh, with our CDP, customer data platform, our unified customer profile, and how that can lead up to our orchestrational level, which in this case would be marketing, and our real-time journey orchestration or marketing automation, if you will, with our content, feedback loops for customer voice and surveys, and how we can engage then, not only in omni-channel, but also digital, directly, in person, or how it's assisted through events, sales, customer service, uh, or like warranty after sales and service. All of this is like building a digital eco, uh, digital twin of a customer journey that you also would like to experience in person. And we'll skip that one. And so what we, what we saw was, of course, pretty much also omni-channel for customer service. Um, I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on talking about these experiences, but the two things I really want to highlight here on this slide is pretty much the similarities between customer service workspace and omnichannel. A lot of people are not familiar the, of the fact that they do have customer service workspace, that um, if as part of customer service enterprise, you actually have this experience already, and that it is something that you can move away from customer service hub. It's okay, you can do that now. Um, and with that, you can have a similar experience with the multi-session experience, pulling in from third-party applications, even with third-party channels. So omni-channel allows you to have first-party channels, customer service, native channels. Now, another thing that I really wanted to highlight here is more what exactly omni-channel is. So omni-channel is not a CCAS solution. Get the move along sign. Right, okay. It's basically an all-in-one digital contact center. If you want to know more, let me let's just approach me, and I'll tell you why. Okay. So this is what we actually went through. We went through the um, chat bot. We routed it using skills-based routing, and then we engaged with teams. We used customer insights and voice. And thank you to our sponsors. sponsors. All of them. All sponsors. our sponsors. Platinum, Everyone. Thank Microsoft, you. HSO, and thank you Boxing, for joining us. Docs 42, PVC, AIS. Yay! <laughs> Yes, give us feedback.